Hello, this is MPP Shout, and welcome to probably a training time. Just I don't really have my sister because she's busy doing uni, uni stuff, so I'm just going to be doing it by myself, which is fun because uh, I'm lonely. <laughs> but yeah, so we're just going to do training. Uh, I've nearly finished training Lyra, so I want to just finish training her, and I'm probably just going to talk about random things because uh, I can't just like not do anything because that'd be boring. So. I had a few topics I want to talk about because I needed something to do because I just can't do improv. I just can't anything to talk about. So I put down piano because I played the piano. And I don't play it very well, um, but uh, I've been doing it for about nine years, nearly. Um, <laughs> next year, uh, next year will be ten years, um, and that's a long time to be playing. And I'm still not very good at it. To be fair, I did quit for like a few years, so I'm kind of picking up where I left off. But I've still got some catching up to do. And I prefer playing easier pieces so they're just more fun to play because then you can get them easier and you have fun playing them instead of struggling through so many different notes and chords and timings and whatever. And it's just annoying when you play really hard pieces because I just play for fun. It's really hard to find pieces to play that, that you want to play on the piano because I spend about three hours a day practicing pieces. Um, not all at once, I just kind of like go down when I feel like it and it rounds off to about three hours on average. Uh, and that's a long time to be playing something, so you have to really like the pieces that you're playing. But then there's some pieces of mu- oh, okay. <laughs> so there's some pieces of music that I like, but I don't want to play on the piano because I think I'd hate them after a while. And it's really hard to explain to someone else. It's like, I like this piece of music, but I don't want to play it because I don't like it that much. Because you have to really love a piece of music to be able to play it three hours a day, every day. To be able to perfect it to a point where you're not stumbling over notes or anything. So I like all this music but I don't want to play any of it on the piano. But yeah they're all the ones that I like playing and ironically a lot of them are Frozen songs because <laughs> they're just good music. Like even if you don't like the movie Frozen's got good music and I've been playing a lot of Frozen 2 songs and Frozen songs and I think I'm driving my family up the wall with them to be honest. And anyway, I should probably stop talking about piano because I can go on about this all day. So people say, what annoys me is that people always go, oh, piano is a really easy instrument. Yeah, it might be easy for like the first few years, but then you start getting all the complicated stuff and suddenly it's really difficult because the notes are really close together. Um, all the black notes and white notes, they're really close together. So when you're trying to play with something with lots of sharps and flats and stuff, it's really hard to get the right note. And if you're, especially if you're doing lots of jumps and stuff, the piano is really hard. I'm doing easy stuff and I find it difficult and I've been playing nearly 10 years. Because of my social anxiety, I get really scared to play in front of people. So I just start shaking and then I can't play. So this is something I struggle with, just playing in front of people. And I want to get better at it because like, what's the point in playing an instrument if you don't share it? I mean, I share it with my family and I do it for fun. But there's also a part of me that really wants to play for people. Um, and then there's also most of me that really hates playing for people. And that part of me is winning a lot of the time. I just don't play for people. But I asked my head of year to if I could play in front of my year group, which is already scary because I don't know when I'm going back to school after lockdown. I'm hoping never, but uh, they'll probably shove us back to school at some point. I asked to play in front of my year group. And so now I have the constant anxiety of at some point I'm playing this in front of my year group but I'm doing I want to do it because I want to be sponsored to do it so like I had the idea because of Louis and if you don't know what happened to Louis go watch this video because I don't really want to talk about it um, in this video but I wanted to raise money for a cat shelter because of Louis so I thought the best way to do that do something you're scared of and you know persevere and whatnot and I'm really regretting that decision yeah because now I have constant anxiety of if I, when I go back to school, I'm gonna get picked up on it and I don't want to, I don't want to do it. 
But I do, I, I want to do it but I don't. I want to raise money for a cat shelter and the best way to do it is to do something to your strengths. My strength is my music because I can actually play it. I've also been learning so many pieces over lockdown. It's like every week I have a new piece because I just play it so often. Like school's been really annoying because school's obviously online now for me. Um, which means that now I have all the online lessons which really doesn't help because it gives, I've had so many panic attacks recently over having to type into the chat in school and it's not fun and all the teachers pick me up on it because we have parents evening and they're all like she's really quiet she doesn't talk yeah but my spanish teacher is the worst because they are really constantly like picking on me to give answers and it's like i don't know spanish please just don't i know i've been doing it for three years but i don't know enough spanish to do this and you're freaking me out every time i have my biggest I have like minor panic attacks, they're not too bad. They triggered one of my worst panic attacks by asking me a question that I didn't know and I was not prepared for it. And then I just went and cried to my sister and I couldn't stop shaking. That was rubbish. And then I called my grandma um, and she calmed me down. She had no idea what was going on, but my grandma was calming me down. So I have the best grandma ever. <laughs> and then I went back and my Spanish genuinely thought I'd left the, <laughs> left the call. Um, but yeah. And also my work environment and my school environment is completely merged which means that I find it hard to change from school mode to fun mode. Um, yeah, I think my only good thing, my, my most productive days are Wednesdays because I have YouTube to do so I generally get all my school work done or at least I try. Um, and generally they're my most productive days just because I have to record. Like, doing YouTube has really made my week go faster, feel faster, because before it was like, oh, you've got Monday to Friday, you've got five days, there's nothing to look forward to in the middle of that. And now I have YouTube, so it's split into Monday to Wednesday, Wednesday recording, then I have Thursday to Saturday, and then Saturday or Sunday I record. And that's worked really well, so now everything feels it goes a lot faster. Okay, how can she not be fully trained already. Ironically, although I really hate doing, participating in lessons, like putting in chats and stuff, I actually really like online school because I can do YouTube easier on Wednesdays and I know school comes first. But I love doing YouTube and it's easier to edit, take photos, play Star Stable, train, um, keep up with Instagram, stuff to do with YouTube. And then also it's just better because I don't like the stress of people. I like being able to be able to go downstairs and get a tea or coffee or hot chocolate whenever I want or go and just play the piano for a few minutes. Do I take coffee? Do I take Beanie? Or do I take Louie? I'm just going to take Beanie because I think Beanie could do with a bit of a video and also she sees blue so. The most annoying thing about lockdown so far has been that we didn't have a haircut recently so my fringe is just out of control. It's a little long, and by a little long, I mean it's like half down, way down my face, which is annoying because I can't see anything. So now I've taken to putting it up in a top knot occasionally uh, when I need to have it out my face, mainly when I play piano, back to the piano again. But generally, um, it's up in a top knot, and I, now I've started tying ribbons around it just to have a bit of fun. And it's just a bit of fun just to tie up my hair, my fringe. It looks stupid. I look super dumb in a top knot on my fringe, but it's to keep my fringe out of the way because it's annoying um, because it's so long. Golden Leaf Stables is actually the only one worth doing the chores for because you get 45 shillings instead of 30. I like the fact that Gotlands came out all together because it means that not you're going to see a lot of variety in the Gotlands because a lot of the time you just see a load of the first batch of horses that come out because everybody buys the first batch of horses and then the second batch comes out and no one has enough star coins or you just genuinely love the first batch but i think because the gotlands all came out at the same time people can generally go for ones that they love which means that you end up with a wider variety of gotlands being ridden and i think that's nice i think the gotlands and frisians were too close together and i think they could have done with probably pushing that back a bit um to more like valentine's day kind of time Okay, there's going to be a day when I run through that and it's going to just trip me up and I'm waiting for that just to completely wipe out my horse at some point. <laughs> just every time I run through it, I just know there's going to be a day when it's going to become solid. I'm really curious as to why they brought out all the Gotlands at once because they don't usually do that. 
I mean, I'm not complaining because I think it will give a wide, wider variety of Gotlands running around. But I'm really confused why they did that. And I'm wondering if they're going to keep doing it or if it's because they needed to get all the Gotlands out to be able to do something else. I don't know. I always do that. I always run into that fence. I'm really excited for next week's update as well. Oh, this week's. Next Wednesday's update. I'm really curious for it because it said we know that you like caring for your horse so we're going to make it easier or something like that. And I wonder what they're going to do because I think that's a very ambiguous prompt or spoiler. You could go anywhere with that. You could have the care for horses anywhere instead of just around stable areas or they could just have a whole new system for caring for the horse or maybe that stable care's getting cheaper or have a complete rework or something. I don't know. There's a lot of different ways you can interpret that spoiler. Also there's the Magic and Clydesdales that are, they've spoiled, like not spoiled, I don't know. They've kind of teased, they've teased the Magic Clydesdales. I don't really like them, I genuinely don't really want magic horses as much anymore. I might get a new saddle pad because saddle pads are always, I love getting saddle pads. I could get the black, then if I, oh no I can get the yellow one, the lemon one. There we go, and then decoration. I only get the matching boots if I'm getting the saddle pad because there's no point getting the matching boots if you haven't got the saddle pad. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for 200 subscribers. Uh, that went up really quickly uh, from like 100 and it's still going up really quickly and I still can't believe it. And I did mention it in an Instagram post but I didn't mention it on YouTube. But thank you very much for 200 subscribers because without you guys, um, I wouldn't be making the videos or they wouldn't, you know, without you guys, my channel is actually nothing. So thank you very much for 200 subscribers and I hope we can continue to grow uh, over the years. If you want to see what I put on Instagram, it's on a highlight somewhere. I think it's on the YouTube highlight. So if you want to go look at that, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for 200 subscribers because that is amazing. I. When I started YouTube three years ago, I didn't ever think I'd even get 100, and now I'm at 200. Although by the time I'm filming this, it's like 240, which is crazy, because I'm pretty sure we only hit 200 like last week. I'm already nearly halfway to 300, which, wow. <laughs> I did really want to get a horse at some point, like my own horse, but I think I've kind of given up on that because I don't, I'm not a morning person. No way am I a morning person. And also, well, I probably could be if I had a horse involved. But also in like the first next few years, I really want to be going to uni um, and then moving off to travel the world. And I don't think it's really sensible to have a horse if you're going to be, if your plan is to travel the world and move um, a lot. But I'm hoping to keep up riding. I've always been interested uh, for as long as I can remember in how they film things. And I have a lot of knowledge in the subject. Whenever we watch films, I really, I'm a really annoying person to watch films with because I talk for the entirety of the thing. I narrate, I, I'm really annoying. Um, and my family makes sure I know I'm really annoying when I watch films, but I comment on like the camera techniques and transitions and stuff. They're just fun to look at. And because I want to do media production, I've been taking more interest in them. I don't even know why they continue watching films for me because I just watch them on my own. I prefer to watch them on my own anyway because I don't talk when I'm on my own. I just talk when there's people there. <laughs> and it's such a stupid thing to do but I don't know. I did it in school once. That's how I knew it was so bad. Because I, whenever, I can't deal with cringe. Secondhand cringe. I can't deal with it. I will pause TV, come back in 10 years and hopefully I won't cringe. But. I just can't deal with secondhand cringe. So, in school we watched this film and it was in French with subtitles because it was, we were watching it in French. Um, and he, they did something and I went really loudly, oh my god, he doesn't have a driver's license. And then everybody looked at me and I just kept my hand over my mouth the entirety of the rest of the thing. And it's still the... <sighs> it's still my most embarrassing memory of school. I mean, it's not my most. It's when I spilt my teacher's coffee all over them. That was my most embarrassing memory um <laughs> but that's a story for another time 
Um, yeah. So I do so many stupid things in school, it's ridiculous. You know, it's really weird to go back to old videos uh, because I have so much more confidence talking to a microphone, talking to myself, because when you do YouTube, you just talk to yourself and then you edit it and then lots of people listen to you. But essentially you're just talking to yourself and I've now got so much more confident talking to a microphone and much more seamless because although I say um a lot still, I don't say it as much as I used to because it used to be every other word and I think I say other things now instead of um which is still really annoying me especially when I have to edit because obviously I edit my videos and I have to listen to myself talk and that's a really hard thing for a lot of people to do listen to themselves talk and I've just got so used to it over the years my Spanish teacher they complained about they did in the first lockdown the one last year 2020 lockdown they complained about having to record their lessons and they didn't really want to go back and listen to it because of their voices and I was just sat there like I do this for fun like I edit videos listening to myself for a hobby <laughs> I, can, I can listen to myself at this point I used to hate my voice and now uh, it's to be fair it is really hard to listen to your own voice especially when you know what's coming this is going off really off topic but I find all my videos really boring when I edit them because I've had to record them, I've had to watch them, I've had to edit them over and over and over again. So I know what's going to happen and it's the same when you write a book, you know what's going to happen because you've gone through the scene every time and you've gone back and over and over and over and over. But you guys don't and that's really what's really hard is the fact that you can go, I know what's going to happen because I've had to edit it, sit through, I've had to record it, sit through editing listen to my own voice enough times to make me go crazy and you guys haven't so because I know it's gonna happen because I had to record it I had to edit my video I had to go through my footage over and over and over again to get the right thing to record to put in my videos but you guys don't know what's gonna happen and that's really hard for people to get over I think sometimes is the fact that yeah you might know what's gonna happen but your audience doesn't while well, trying to be smart and do a shortcut, but whatever. And it's the same with writing books, because my friend's an author. Well, they want to be an author. And they've got, they're really good. But sometimes they overthink their books and they're like, oh, but it doesn't seem like dramatic enough or something. And it's like, but you've had to, that's annoying. You've had to listen to, you've had to go through this and edit this book over and over and over again. Of course you're gonna hate it. Like if, you know what, just start again. Um, like, of course you're going to know what's going to happen next because you've had to go through this book and edit it. You've had to go through it and read it over and over and over again. Of course you're going to know what's going to happen. But someone that's not going, that's not read it, doesn't know what's going to happen. So your intention is working. You just don't know it's working because you know what's going to happen. Same with videos. And that's something that I struggled with a lot when I first started YouTube. It was like but it's not very fun and it's really boring because I had to sit through and record it. I already know what's gonna happen. I just cannot do this race today. If you're sat there and you do YouTube and you're thinking, oh, my videos are all really boring. They're probably not. It's probably just boring because to you because you know what's gonna happen because you've had to sit through and watch it over and over and over again in editing and recording. So just don't worry about it too much. Keep in mind that if if you're recording, editing, writing books, whatever, just remember that other people don't know what's going to happen because they're not you. They haven't had to spend hours and hours and hours and hours going through footage or trawling through your book for mistakes or writing a book. They don't know what's going to happen. So be easy on yourself. You're probably better than you think you are. Pep talk over because I've spent way too long talking about that. I think YouTube is where I use my voice the most. I don't really get much use out of it because it's usually my mouth is just usually shut most of the time. <laughs> Obviously, especially with lockdown, I text my friends, but that's not really talking. So my voice doesn't get much use. And YouTube is the biggest use of my voice. Last week I did a video about being sick and I'm fine now. I had like a cold for a few days and that was rubbish and I felt rubbish, but I'm fine now. I would have changed my starter. I was going to change my starters coat because it's a mirrored coat so it's kind of annoying but I got really attached to it and I don't really want to change it anymore 
that's the end of this video if you enjoyed please leave a like and subscribe to my channel follow my instagram well and peace child so hopefully sometime soon training time can be with you guys instead of just me talking to myself <laughs> and i'll see you guys in the next video bye